Hello! Welcome to another video tutorial on using Microsoft Word to do APA formatting and style for your papers and assignments. In my previous videos, we set up the basic formatting, the running head, title page, abstract, and the main body. To view these tutorials, please see the links I've included in the description below. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to do your APA references page. The references page is arguably the most difficult part of APA style. There are many guides to help you with your reference citations. You might have one you were required to purchase for a class, or you might prefer to use a free one online. One of the most widely used and trusted online APA guides is the OWL at Purdue APA guide. To find it, just open up a browser like Chrome or Firefox and Google OWL APA. The guide should be your first result. Go ahead and click it and that will take you to the guide. On the left, there are links to lots of reference list examples. For example, I'm going to click on the one for books. You can see it gives you examples for all of the different situations you might encounter. I'm going to leave this open for now and come back to it when it's time to do our first citation. Let's go back to our Word document. Okay, so first let's set up our references page. Starting at the very end of your main body, which might end in the middle of a page, hit the enter key on your keyboard. Keep doing that until you're at the top of a new page. Center the text. Type in the word references. Check the spacing tool to ensure that it is set at 2.0 and that both of the bottom options say add space. This will ensure that our references page is fully double spaced with no extra spaces between paragraphs. Hit enter on your keyboard and click left align to start your first citation. One rule in APA is that everything you cited in your main body must be cited on your references page. The opposite is also true. Everything on your references page should have an in-text citation in your main body. In other words, your in-text citations and your references should match. Having said that, as I look over my very short example main body, I see that I have three different citations. Here's one, here's two, and here's three. My first citation is from a website. For that, we're going to go back to our Purdue OWL guide. We're going to click on electronic sources for the reference list. Then scroll down to non-periodical web document or report. There it is. Okay, now we're going to follow this example exactly. That includes the punctuation, the capitalization, spacing, and italicization. We're just going to plug in the information from our own source into this example. Let's make it easier on ourselves by highlighting and copying the example citation from Purdue. Go back to your Word document, scroll down to your references page, and click on the first line. Then right click to paste in the citation. Notice that there are three paste options. We want to choose the middle merge formatting option. This will keep our font and spacing, but keep their italicization. Now it's time to plug in the information from our source. The first thing we need to know is the author or authors. Let's go back to our source and take a look to see if we can find them. Okay, so here is the first source that I'm trying to cite. 
As we scroll through the page, it is clear that we do not see anyone's name tied to this information. However, we do know that this is part of the University of Central Arkansas's website. So we can list them as the author. In APA, this is called Organization as Author. Next, we need to know the date of publication. So let's go back to our source. As we scroll through the page, we see that there's only one date, and that is the copyright date. However, if we visit other pages on the same website, we notice that the copyright date remains the same. It is likely, therefore, that this is not a reliable date to know when that specific information was created. So with no other option, we can put ND for no date. Next we need the title of the document. That's relatively simple. It's APA in-text citations for this source. Notice that the title of the document is in sentence case, which means that only the first word, abbreviations, and proper nouns are capitalized. Everything else is lowercase. Finally, we need to add the URL, also known as a web address. To do that, go back to your source and copy the web address from the top of the browser. Then we simply paste it into our citation. Now that this citation is done, hit enter on your keyboard to start the next citation. My second citation is from a journal article retrieved from an EBSCOhost database. Our library databases give you all the information you need to cite the article on one page. Now we need to find the correct example for this source on the Purdue OWL Guide. And on the left side, we're going to click on Electronic Sources if we're not already there. Then scroll down to the two examples that say article from an online periodical with DOI assigned and with no DOI assigned. A DOI is a digital object identifier. Some articles have them and some don't. So let's look back at our source details page in EBSCOhost. If this article had a DOI, it would be listed toward the bottom of the details. Since there is no DOI, we're going to use the example from Purdue for an article with no DOI. Copy and paste the example into your references page. Just like before, we're going to use the middle merge formatting paste option. Then it's as simple as plugging in the information from your article details page in the database. We're going to need the author and the year the article title, the title of the journal, the volume number, the issue number, and the page numbers. Remember that your article title should be in sentence case. That means only the first word of the title, abbreviations, and proper nouns should be capitalized. Everything else is lowercase. The title of the journal, on the other hand, should be in title case. That means that all important words in the title are capitalized. Next, we need our volume number and issue number. Volume 16, issue 4 for this one. For issue numbers, we're going to turn off italicization and add parentheses around it. Last but not least, we need our web address or URL. In EBSCOhost databases, 
The link up here is quite lengthy and also it tends to break after a day or two, which means that the link will no longer work when you click on it. To get around that, they've included a tool called Permalink. We're going to click on that, which pops up a non-breakable web address that we can use in our citation. Highlight it, copy, and paste it into your citation as usual. Since these links are relatively long, they might cause the link to go on to a new line. Don't worry about that, that's okay. Hit enter on your keyboard to start a new citation. This will be our third and last citation for this video. Our last citation is for a print book with three authors. Here you can see I took a picture of the book and you can see what the cover of the book would look like. Sorry about the glare. So we know we need to go back to the Purdue Owl Guide to find an example for citing a book. On the left side of the Purdue Owl Guide, we can see that there's a page for reference list books. This is not a book with an editor, so we can use the basic format for books option. Copy and paste the example into your references page using the merge format option. Now it's time to plug in the information from the source. It's tempting to use the cover as your main source of information, however, you're going to get more detailed information on the title page of the book, which looks like this. This provides us the title of the book, the authors, the publisher, and the publishing location. The first part we need are the author's names. We're going to list them in the order that they're given on the title page. Since we have multiple authors, we're going to separate each one with a comma. Then the last two authors have an ampersand between them with the comma as well. The ampersand is the squiggly and symbol. Now we need the date of publication. That's the one piece of information that was not given on the title page. For that, we're actually going to look on the back of the title page, which looks like this. Looking at this, we can see that there's a copyright date at the top of 2012, so that's the date we want to use. Now we can go back to our title page for the title, which is an easy guide to APA style. Remember that the title should be in sentence case. That means only the first word of the title is capitalized and abbreviations or proper nouns. Everything else is lowercase. Next we will do the location. Looking at our title page, you'll notice that we have multiple locations listed. In this case, we're only going to use the first one they listed, so that's Los Angeles. Make sure to also include the state abbreviation for the city or the name of the country where the city is located. Then after the colon, we put the publisher's name, which in this case is Sage. Make sure that your citation ends with a period. All citations should end with a period unless they end with a URL, like the two above here, or with a DOI. Okay, so now we have three double-spaced citations, but it's really hard to tell where each one begins. To fix that, we're going to use hanging indents. Highlight all of your references and right-click in the highlighted area. Then choose Paragraph. A new window will pop up. Under Special, choose Hanging. Then click OK. Now it is very easy to tell where each citation begins. However, our citations should also be alphabetized by the first word of each citation. Currently, they are not correctly alphabetized. We could use cut and paste to rearrange them, but it's actually even easier to use the A to Z tool at the top under the Home tab. Highlight all of the citations, 
and go ahead and click on that A to Z tool. Then click OK. As you can see, your citations are now magically sorted alphabetically. This concludes the video on making your references page. Stay tuned for the next video on using the CiteFast website to generate citations quickly and easily to do your references page even faster.